Good evening. evening. Great to have all of you here. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to all of you. I want to start by uh, telling you a little bit about this service. Uh, Some of you have been here before. Some of you probably haven't attended one of these before, but I I, I nonetheless always like to tell a little bit about this service, how how it came to be, and and why it's a little bit different than a lot of uh, Christmas Eve services. Many years ago when I was uh, at the Unitarian Church in Louisville, uh, we had a couple, our music director and her husband, who had been uh, former Catholics. And they really loved the Advent tradition. And Mark was a a classical guitarist. And so we had this little gathering on Christmas Eve where we would do a traditional Advent. And oddly enough, it worked fantastic in a Unitarian uh, church with his quaint music playing on the guitar and us singing some traditional carols. It was very meaningful. But when Mark and Janet moved away, uh, it was a tradition we wanted to continue, but I wasn't as uh, as comfortable or versed in in the Catholic tradition to continue it uh, in that way. At the same time, I'd been uh, studying under the, the, oddly enough, excommunicated Catholic priest, Matthew Fox, who just spoke here a, a short time ago, who uh, really came up with the the idea of creation spirituality, a spirituality that's based upon nature and the the evolution of the cosmos, and it embraces so many world traditions as well as science and the and the the full story of the 13.7 billion year history of the of the universe. And I thought, I wonder if there's a way we could put a service together that celebrates not only the advent of one child but the advent of every child, the advent, in fact, of of life and being itself. And so it's really a wonderful blend of of taking some traditional uh, scriptures and and myths and readings from a variety of traditions throughout time and around the world from from our our human collective, as well as some of the traditional holiday songs that uh, we find right out of our own Unitarian hymn. And it turned into, I think, a a, a celebration uh, that most of us, regardless of what tradition we're most comfortable with, can celebrate because it celebrates the advent of, uh, of, all, of all people, of all people uh, as special, unique gifts to the world and to, the exist- to our existence as well as all creatures. So that's the, that's the meaning behind today's cosmic advent service. And I think, I, I hope that you find it as, uh, as meaningful and and somehow as quaint and as uh, comfortable as we did that more traditional Advent service all those years ago with a classical guitarist and a few hymns. I want to start with the first movement, uh, Darkness and Silence, because as a as precious a gift as sight and sound are to all of us, those senses that help us put our world into some sort of rational order, all of us, like the universe itself, began in darkness and silence. And if, as so many religions instruct, it is necessary to return now and again to our source, then it is to our sense, not to our sense of order that we must return, but to this sense of chaos, of disorder, of darkness and silence. In the Hebrew scriptures, this primordial chaos is described as a formless void. The ancient Egyptians deified it as the goddess Nun, or Nu, similar to the Babylonian goddess Tiamat, a sea monster, a gigantic whirlpool, ready to swallow everything up. Even light itself cannot escape a voracious black hole, the womb of creation. The word chaos itself comes from the Greeks and refers to the original state of existence from which all creation sprang. It literally means empty space. Chaos, empty space. But as physicists are now telling us, empty space or chaos is not as empty as we thought. 
we now know that the universe is comprised mostly of dark matter and dark energy, and that the core of every galaxy exists a gigantic black hole, too dense for even light to escape. And even if we could manage to create true emptiness, void even of all subatomic particles, even invisible particles of light, cosmologist Brian Swim tells us that something incredible happens. Everywhere there are no atoms and no elementary particles and no protons and no photons, suddenly elementary particles will emerge. In short, he says, being itself arises out of the field of fecund emptiness. So today's physicists sound a lot like yesterday's mystics. Mystics like Meister Eckhart who asked, what does God do all day long? God gives birth. It is this homage to the creative power of the dark that mystics like St. John of the Cross are able to write inspirational poems like The Dark Night of the Soul. He wrote that while suffering in prison. And that led to the contemplative life in Western religion through which monks and nuns live cloistered lives in complete silence and to the practice of meditation in the East through which practitioners learn that sometimes the best way to get things done is by sitting still and keeping quiet. It is as Master Morihi Ueshiba instructed his students, return to that source and leave behind all self-centered thoughts, petty desires, and anger. For those who are possessed by nothing, possess everything. So we light our first Advent candle to honor the darkness and quiet from which all things and all beings are born. And I thank, thank my daughter Cassidy for being our Advent lighter uh, today. She, along with Kelly and Aaron Cameron, who are also home for the holidays, great to have you, are also going to be our, re our readers tonight. So thank you for helping with that. In your... Uh, order of service, you will see a responsive reading, and I will uh, begin and ask you as a congregation to be our respondents. These are from, again, a variety of traditions. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Yet mystery and manifestations arise from the same source. This source is called darkness. Darkness within darkness, the gateway to all understanding. One method, one path into spiritual depth is to let go of our images, even our most cherished ones, including all video images and audio images, and to be sinking into silence. As is your willing and able, and join us in singing Silent Night.
stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious form. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angels' voices, oh, night divine, oh, night, when Christ was born, oh, night. so much, John. This is obviously a service that is really about music more than anything else, and so we, we're, we're singing a lot together, and we're hearing some special music, so thanks to Planted by Hands, to Kelly and Peggy and Dan for uh, leading us and, and performing for us, John Hancock and Michalina, thank you so much for your incredible presence today. Though we must remember the, the mystery from which all creation springs, the nature of the phenomenal world is light. All beings come from the stars and must continue to nourish themselves with light in some form. The food we consume is 
photonic energy that has been stored in the plants and other creatures we eat. It was Einstein who first realized that matter and energy are the same, that E equals mc squared, and the energy that composes our bodies is light. Physicist David Bohm once went so far as to say that all matter is frozen light. Theologian Matthew Fox adds that this is not just true of human flesh, but of all flesh. The oranges we eat, and the tea we drink, the grasses and the animals, the birds and the stars are all slow moving light. Matter is light. It is a very special light. The Jewish mystic text Zohar means radiance, and it calls God's glory Shekinah, meaning brightness. And when we speak of spiritual awareness here in the West, we sometimes use the word enlightenment and even refer to those who are unusually smart as bright or brilliant. So at this time of year, especially when we contemplate the birth of a unique child under the light of a special star, we should recall that every child, indeed every creature, every birth is the birth of a radiant being, a light of the world. And so we light our second advent candle as a symbol of birth and light. The mother of our songs, the mother of all our seed, bore us in the beginning of things, and so she is the mother of all types of people, the mother of all nations. She is the mother of the thunder, the mother of the streams, the mother of the trees and all things. She is the mother of the worlds and of the older brother, the stone people. She is the mother of the fruits of the earth and of all things. She is the mother of our youngest brothers and the strangers. She is the mother of our dance paraphernalia, of all our temples, and she is the only mother we possess. She alone is the mother of the fire and the sun and the Milky Way. She is the mother of the rain and the only mother we possess. And she has left us a token in all temples, a token in the form of songs and dances. She has no cult, and no prayers are really directed to her. But when the fields are sown and the priests chant their incantations, the people say, and then we think of the one and only mother of the growing things, of the mother of all things. One prayer was recorded. Our mother of the growing fields, our mother of the streams, will you have pity upon us? To our mother alone do we belong. Please stand and join in hymn number 225, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and with your captive children dwell. Give comfort to all exiles here, and to the aching heart mid cheer. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come within as love to dwell. O come, you splendor, very bright, as joy that never And turn all hearts to peace That greed and war at last shall cease Rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel Shall come to thee as earth to dwell O come, day's day spring Cheer our 
spirits by your presence here, and dawn in every broken soul, as vision that can see. O oh, great mystery, whose name cannot be named, dwell among us and move within us to create heaven here on earth. Give us just enough for today and go easy on us and help us go easy on others. Keep us out of harm's way and away from bad company. Amen. I'm going to invite you to turn with me to responsive reading number 532 in the back of your gray hymnal. Number 532. If uh, there aren't enough hymnals in your row, if you'd share with a neighbor, that'd be great. Number 532. The music of the spheres. Its rhythms are equal, repeated seasons, the beating of the heart. The cycles of stars and corn. Rhythms of moon and tide, one single rhythm in planets, atoms, sea. Melody, accord, arpeggios, the harp of the universe, unity behind apparent multiplicity.
Truly enlightened beings know that life is a rare and precious gift and strive to receive this gift with celebration and thanksgiving. It seems so odd then that many in the world use religion as an excuse to squander this brief, brief gift that each of us has but for a short lifetime. In the West, too many of us have succumbed to the Paul redemption theology that says ours is a fallen world and every being is corrupted by sin. And many other misunderstand Eastern thought to mean we ought to emotionally detach from the detach from the world and assume that everything in this life is an illusion. Certainly there is much beyond this life and much in this life that we will never comprehend. But this season reminds us to celebrate the incarnation of being, the manifestation of light in the flesh. The cry of the infant in the manger reflects the cry of the realist who strives to take advantage of being here now. The only moment any of us can be sure of. As Thomas Aquinas once said, Religion is supreme thankfulness. Religion is supreme thankfulness or gratitude. And every ingratitude is a sin. The word religion means to rejoin, to reconnect. It's not about separating ourselves from the world, but fully stepping into it, into our bodies, inhabiting and fully living the one life that is ours. It means embracing the first law of creation. It is good. So we light our third Advent candle with celebration and gratitude.
In honor of celebration and gratitude, we have some small uh, candles up here, tea lights, that uh, we're, I'm going to invite those who would like to, to come forward and light a candle in honor of your joy, what you're celebrating this season. If you'd like to, you can say it in, into one of the microphones up here, or you can do it in silence. Uh, whichever you'd like, Cassidy is going to help uh, uh, get those started. They, these are these are uh, tea lights that have been once used, gently used tea lights. <laughs> and so some of them might not light as easy as they would if they were brand new. So uh, if, if there, you have one that you just can't light, just uh, put it down and grab another. And I'm going to start, uh, I'll model what this is like, how's that, because I'm so uh, joyful always to have my kids home and even though my son and his girlfriend opted to uh, take the night off so they could play some virtual reality in the basement. Uh, uh, I'm, so, I'm so glad to have them uh, home, and, and it's always great having my lovely daughter here too. Love and family. Virginia. For the joy of family. Love of family. For my granddaughter, Nazina, who t turned 12 on the 22nd and is moving here at the end of next week with my daughter. Two new Unitarians. <laughs> Healing of relationships. that makes the world go round. Snow in the mountains. Good to be home again. Grab, grab another one there. Your turn. 
turn them on the side they like just a little easier. Hey, Mom. Making music. Our son Patrick joined the Unitarian Church in Boca Raton, Florida. Giving it CPR. <laughs> I'm so grateful for my partner of almost 60 years, Jean Marie. Of course, now I can't see very well after staring into those candles for however long. Give yourself a kiss. If you live in China, don't look somewhere else, in Tibet or Mongolia. If you want to hold the beautiful one, hold yourself to yourself. When you kiss the beloved, touch your own lips with your own fingers. The beauty of every woman and every man is your own beauty. The confusion of your hair obscures that sometimes. An artist comes to paint you and stands with his mouth open. Your love reveals your beauty but all covering would disappear if only for a moment your holding back would sit before your generosity and ask, Sir, who are you? At that, the lover's life-changing face gives you a wink. Please stand and sing Joy to the World. It's number 245.
I'll invite you to read with me in unison the prayer that is printed on your order of service under Wisdom and Love. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Thank you, Michalina. Truly living life in the here and now is never a selfish act. The law of the universe is attraction. Again, as cosmologist Brian Swim explains, at this cosmic scale, the basic dynamism of the universe is the attraction each galaxy has for every other galaxy. Nothing in all science has been established and studied with greater attention and detail than this primary attraction of each part of the universe for every other part. We might also accurately call this attraction the universe has for itself passion. At its deepest and most basic level, the universe is comprised of the sort of irrepressible, passionate love Rumi refers to when he says, give yourself a kiss. If you want to hold the beautiful one, hold yourself to yourself. Swim, referring to this passion as allurement, insists that if we are going to think about love in its cosmic dimension, we must start with the universe as a whole. We must begin with the attraction that permeates the entire macrostructure. I'm speaking precisely of that basic binding energy everywhere in reality. Once again, we see that science and religion are now meeting. 
Science is in agreement with Jesus who taught that God is love. Likewise, it is not enough for us to simply live our lives if we are not incarnating love, incarnating the allurement and attraction that is everywhere in our universe. So we light our fourth Advent candle in honor of wisdom and love. <clears throat> the Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth, when he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Let's sing about the kings. Please stand and join hymn number 259. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, star of wonder, star of light Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading still proceeding Guide us through this perfect night Drank incense to offer have I Incense on the deity nigh Prayer and praising all are raising Worship God most high Perfect night. Myrrh is mine, it's Bethlehem's plain. Gold I bring to crown him again. Love forever, ceasing never in our hearts to reign. Oh, star. The following poem was written by Maddie Stepanek, who died in 2004 when he was only 13 from a rare form of muscular dystrophy. 
During his short life, he became a best-selling poet, peace activist, and motivational speaker. His hero and friend, President Jimmy Carter, called him the most extraordinary person whom I have ever known. Dear God, tonight my prayers are for the world. We have to stop this fighting. We have to stop the wars. People need to lay down their weapons and find peace in their hearts. People need to stop arguing and hating. People need to notice the good things. People need to remember you, God. Maybe you could come and shoot a little bow and arrow pinch into all the angry people's hearts, God. Then they would feel you again. And then they would realize what they are doing and how horrible the killing and hating and fighting is. And they might even begin to pray. Then they could reach in and pull the little bow and arrow pinch out of their hearts and feel good again. And be loving and living people again. And then the world would be at peace and the children would be safe and the people would be happy. And we could all say thank you together. Amen. When I behold the wonder of nature's beauteous gifts so good and great. When sun and moon keep watch over the splendor and changing seasons of our time on earth. With rapture sings my grateful soul to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul my grateful praise to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and fresh glades I wander and hear birds singing sweetly in the trees when I look down from lofty mountains grandeur and see the brook and feel a gentle breeze with rapture sings my grateful soul to thee
rapture sings my grateful soul to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Finally, as we contemplate the darkness and silence from which we all come, the light and radiance through which we live, in celebration and gratitude, incarnating the love that is our true nature and the nature of the entire universe, it must not be forgotten that love is a verb, not a noun. Love must be lived out, and the way that it is best expressed is through justice. Where there is no justice, there is no love. For as Meister Eckhart understood, compassion means justice. Matthew Fox proclaims, the prophet interferes with the injustice, the unnecessary pain that reigns on the earth and its creatures when humans neglect justice and compassion. Justice and compassion, again, are the same. Justice is love lived out. The prophet, Fox goes on to say, is but a mystic in action. So the advent toward life is a march toward justice, and justice depicted as a blind goddess holding scales by the ancient Greeks reflects the harmonious balance that sustains the entire universe. Thus, it is justice, the incarnation of love that is both the Alpha and the Omega of our faith. It is the beginning and the end of our cosmic advent. So we light our cosmic candle in the name of transformation and wholeness, in the name of equality and justice for all. I invite you again to read with me in unison the closing prayer in your order of service. When we leave Mass, we ought to go out the way Moses descended Mount Sinai, with his face shining, with his heart brave and strong to face the world's difficulties. Please rise as you're willing and able and join us in singing a rousing version of Angels We Have Heard on High, number 231. We're going to give just a little bit of space between the verses.
you can remain standing, because the closing words are going to be pretty quick. But right now, I want everybody in the room to think of the, the day, date of your birthday. And all together, I want you to say the day you were born. So I was born on. Ready? I was born on. Okay. So that was the chaos. And now we're quickly going to move into the one thing, no matter what day we were born on, uh, that, that we share in common. So I'm going to have you repeat after me if, these words, if you will. The eve of my birth, the eve of my birth was a holy night. Was a holy night. I, am a light of the world. I am a light of the world. Go in peace. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.